perspective on how we're playing tonight was rough uh, for a lot of different reasons. Um, it's a game we should win. It's a game we played well enough to win, just didn't seize control of it down the stretch. And as much as, uh, you know, I've played well, shot the ball well, it didn't happen tonight. Our second unit was amazing. Second quarter, beginning of the fourth quarter, and they deserve a lot of credit for keeping us in the game, not only keeping us in the game, but giving us a, a big lead. Um, in that fourth quarter, some sloppy turnovers. Uh, Washington made some big shots. We had some some tough misses at the rim. And you come out with a loss, and it's, it's tough. So you got to stay positive about where we are overall with, uh, you know, a, a good window of games coming up. And just try to turn the page to hopefully, you know, a, a good return to Chase on Friday. So three and two, solid. Should have been five and oh, could have been four and one. It wasn't. Move on. Steph, Mark Hayes, um, I know you don't really care about the streak coming to an end right now or anything, but um, looking back on what you accomplished and what you did, um, what what are your thoughts on that? It was a great run. It was something that had been done before, and, you know, it was going to end at some point. Now you got to start another one. So it's just a matter of, again, the next play mentality. Um Trying to get rejuvenated when we go home. I think it was to do it, you know, home, road, some big games, you know, put a streak together. It was, uh, it was a special ride for sure. And never really get too hyped up on individual, you know, streaks or accolades like that. But um, there were some historical names that, you know, uh, I was able to pass and doing something at this age was was pretty special. Which of your misses will you kind of replay in your mind tonight? What plays kind of stick out to you when you think about you know should it should it have won the game? Uh, probably the turnover at the top of the key. We had a good um, flow going. JP hit me at the top. I was I could have shot it right away. Second guessed it. Saw KO. It was just a bang bang play that they got a deflection and, and a steal. Um, missed some shots down the stretch, but you know I've made a bunch of them. It's not something that you ever go back and second guess the the shot. It's just you wish you would have made it. But other than that, that was a tough turnover at that point. You get a dunk right there. Maybe they call a timeout. We were celebrating. Um, we keep control of the game, but gave him life. What about you, that tonight didn't work out uh, the way you wanted, but why do you think, looking back now over the last few weeks, the consistency for you has maintained such a high level? Speaking at the right time, and I usually, it's usually the trend of our season or my seasons getting better as each game goes, so. Uh, I'm glad, you know, this season's no different. Just trying to continue to get better and build that confidence of uh, playing, you know, my best basketball toward the end of the season. What have you liked about Jordan Poole's just season? And, and what do you like about his game and what he's becoming? He's just resilient no matter what his opportunity is and what his performance is night to night. He, he has that irrational confidence that is necessary to get through some of those ups and downs. Um, we talked a little bit, I said, I don't know, I told y'all, I would love to show him some film, you know, of me, my second year and, and some of the ups and downs I went through trying to find your rhythm, trying to find, you know, where your shots were going to come from, you know, as opportunities kind of come and go and just keeping your, your, your confidence about who you are as a player. And he he showed that tonight. And he's he's helped us a lot over the course of the season since he got back from Orlando. And he's going to continue to help us and continue to get better. And 
you know, be accountable to himself and what he uh, what he expects from himself out there when he gets when he gets his opportunities. Looking at Kelly and Jordan, I mean, Kelly had a rough January, and Jordan had some time in the G League. What do you think about the patience that players get? It seems like sometimes it's the thing that they can need most, but the thing that they can like they don't they get the least of. What is it about patience and giving time, giving guys time to to figure things out? It's a part of this business. I mean, everything is so heightened and scrutinized. That, you know, every single game, you know, as it should be, there's a lot of attention on what we do. But, you know, there's a, a steady hill to climb in terms of, you know, your overall progress. Nobody is an overnight success in this league or even when they change teams. So it's, for the most part, it's, it's just one of those um, – situations where you always just want to try to get a little bit better every game. Um, and even if things you don't execute out on the floor, you don't play as well as you want to, you, you still have to maintain that confidence in yourself. Um, and, and as a team, we're in a situation where a lot of guys have gotten a lot of different opportunities based on injuries, based on trying to find the right groups of, of guys and rotations and stuff like that. So I think there's been more – experimenting and trial and error this year than, than, than usual. So it's a part of the process of, of us trying to, you know, again, peak at the right time. Steph, James Hill, BNC Sports. Uh, next stop, back home to the Bay Area. Uh, fans will be in the house. Uh, just talk a little bit about headed back home and, and getting some, uh, some victories. Uh, we're going to enjoy the, the atmosphere. I think I've talked about it before. It's, it's definitely noticeable if you have even just a thousand fans in, in the seats. Um, it makes a huge difference in the atmosphere and whatnot. And, and obviously, at Chase, we had what, you know, three quarters of a season opening up a new building and then getting shut down. And we've had a whole season now where we haven't had any fans. So you're kind of sick of looking at the blue tarp. You want to see some bodies in there. And, um, we're going to enjoy the atmosphere and, and to your point, I don't, we don't want to put too much pressure on ourselves in terms of, you know, trying to get it all back and, or not get it all back, but looking too far ahead in terms of how many games we have at home. We have a big game on Friday against a good Denver team that we got to uh, be ready for. When we do pick at the home and road ratio you guys have and the opportunities or the opponents you'll be seeing, uh, what kind of feeling do you get about what you guys can accomplish over these last uh, this last month? Yeah, I don't think we need to get too ahead of ourselves. Let's win on Friday and take it from there. I've got two questions for you. Uh, first one is, uh, why did you decide to be a commercial And the second one is, um, what does the uh, Athens as a whole need to do to help the WNBA grow? I miss, next- I, I miss what you said. The first question is, why did you decide to actually uh, be in a commercial with Sue Bird? And the second one is, um, what does the uh, athletes of the whole need to do to actually um, actually help support the WNBA and push it forward? Uh, just celebrate what they're what they're doing, what they're already doing, what they've done for years now, and what they're going to continue to do um, on and off the court. You know, they've set a standard and a model for how a league activates and uses their voice and, you know, their platform and is very consistent with, you know, their stance on social justice, racial justice, any issue that they're passionate about and a, a collective energy uh, amongst, you know, all the athletes. So that that's, that's one. Um, and then we all just can find ways to, uh, collaborate and uh, combine our worlds, if you will, and, and our reach and our resources to do, you know, special things off the court to, uh, you know, keep impacting um, going forward. So, you know, the Carmax thing with Sue was, was a special, fun opportunity to shout her out for all her successes um, and accolades um and what she's done in her career so you know nothing more to that
one more. Yeah, Kendra, I think you had one, right? Yeah, thanks, Raymond. I'm um, going back to what Nick kind of asked you a little bit ago about, you know, you personally getting on this streak the past couple games, opening up, up more broadly to the team. What has allowed you guys to finally get on the streak? Because I feel like for a really long time, there's been talking about what you need to do as a team, but now you've actually been able to put it together. It's just reps and continuing to fine tune what we're trying to do. And you got to go prove it. I think we, like you said, we've, this last 10 game stretch has been much better in terms of our night to night performance. We've had some tough losses, obviously, but some really good wins and trending in the right direction. Um, but even tonight's a learning lesson of even when you don't play your best, just a couple more stops down the stretch, just a couple, you know, but smarter decisions turn the ball over will, you know, allow us to take a game like this and take it home and get a win. So, you know, we do have what 13 games left to take all of that collective experience and hopefully get some guys back healthy. You know, Juan, D. Lee, maybe EP. We'll see. And and uh, you know, just again, stay in the moment because you know we have.